Now I'm joined by Dr and Conservative MP Andrew Morrison, Rushnara Ali, a Labour MP on the Treasury Select Committee, and Stephen Riker, a Professor of Psychology at the University of St Andrews and a member of the SAGE subcommittee advising on behavioural science. He also sits on Independent SAGE. And Dr Morrison, if we start with you, what's your reaction to the news tonight? Do you think it's going to solve the problem? Well, I'm really pleased by the announcement this evening. It's obviously the right thing to do. It's going to happen anyway, isn't it, on the 16th of August, but it's right given events that we do look at critical trades and sectors because we've got to keep the economy going. We've got to keep food on the shelves. And I think what today is, is a pragmatic response to the situation that ministers have found themselves in. I'm also quite pleased because it seems to be an acknowledgement that testing has a big place to play in trying to work out the risk that people pose to others. So uh, test and release, I think, is going to be a much, much bigger part of our way of dealing with this in the weeks ahead, and perhaps even in advance of the 16th of August, where we may see a lot more people being added to that list. But how on earth did we get to this place? It wasn't surprising what happened. We knew that the government knew that we were going to open up on July the 19th. It was obvious hundreds of thousands of people were going to start being pinged and the economy would struggle. Shouldn't they have acted sooner? And it's, instead, it just looks like chaos. Well, actually, a lot is made, of course, of so-called Freedom Day, the 19th of June on Monday. Uh, the, big, the big step was step three uh, on the 17th of May, and cases have been climbing uh, for weeks now. But crucially, and uh, the number climbing. of admissions to hospital and ITU and tragically death have not been climbing at the same rate. So the, the, the link is very much weak, weak. And I think that's the, that's the important point about all of this, that link between infection and the worst consequences of COVID is, is nowhere where it was a year ago, if you cast your mind back. And Rishnara Ali, what's your position on all of this? Aren't the changes announced tonight exactly what the economy needs? Well, look, the issue is that the government's now dealing with symptoms of a set of problems and a, a, set, a, a chaotic situation that it has created. What the government needed to do is heed our warnings about making sure that uh, the, the sort of things that were working, like mask wearing and keeping distance and working from home for those who can, that those things were maintained so that we can ease out of lockdown in a way that's sustainable, that doesn't lead to a spike in increases in infections, because we've still got a sizable section of the population that hasn't been fully vaccinated. That's why this is so d disheartening, because what we've seen is a variant that the government allowed into the country from India, the Delta variant, that it could have stopped from arriving into the country and spreading like wildfire. And then, li not listening to advisors, scientific advisors, when they were warning that these numbers are going to go up and it's going to cause a huge amount of uh, damage. And the final thing I'd say is that the, the government's mistakes, and it keeps repeating mistakes, is costing the economy gravely. Last year, we had Eat Out to Help Out, which was a disaster in terms of how it spread the disease, and then we ended up in a second lockdown. This year, even if the chain is broken a little somewhat because of the vaccination uh, program, there's still a risk, as the World Health Organization warned this uh, week, uh, of new variants. So we, we're seeing recklessness on a scale that is, is shocking, frankly, and people are dying as well. Sorry to interrupt. Stephen Reich, I'd just like to bring you in. Jeremy Hunt said today public consent for test and trace is at risk as a result of this chaos. By creating exceptions to the rule, the food industry, other critical workers, is public compliance likely to be damaged, do you think? Mm. Well, I wish we'd stop talking about the pandemic because the problem aren't the pings. Uh, the, the, the pings actually tell you that there's a problem so you can do something about it. The problem is people being in contact with those who are infected because so many people are infected. And the issue in the end is what are we going to do about that level of infections? It was quite self-evident that once you got to 50,000 infections a day, or as Savage Javid has predicted, up to 100,000, and some say even 200,000, then very large numbers of people would have to self-isolate, and very large numbers of uh, contacts would then be contacted. And the way to deal with that, in the end, is to ask what can we do 
to take those infections seriously and to deal with them. And so again, these aren't, uh, we're not talking about going back into lockdown, but we're talking about sensible uh, measures like uh, retaining masks, uh, social distancing, uh, good ventilation. And the interesting thing is that when you look at public opinion, public opinion very much agrees with that. So two thirds of people think that the government moved too fast. About 75% of people think uh, we should retain masks in uh, isn't crowded that what the government, In a sense, it doesn't, isn't, doesn't that mean that they're doing the work that the government wants them to do? If people believe that and will do it of their own accord, then surely the government's position is correct. Well, the point is that people are being responsible. But for people to be responsible, they need support by the government. So, for instance, if you want to go into ventilated spaces, you can't do that as a matter of individual choice unless there is regulation to make sure that spaces are properly ventilated. So what we need is, yes, people to be responsible, but for the government, too, to take its responsibility seriously. First of all, to give us clear messaging, and the messaging recently has been about as clear as mud, but secondly, to create safe environments so that we can keep ourselves and our community safe. This isn't just about individual responsibility, it's about systemic responsibility and government responsibility. And, and my fear is the government has given up on its responsibilities, handed over the buck to the public, which makes it much more difficult for the public to act in ways, as I say, that keep themselves and their communities safe. And Andrew Morrison, your reaction to that? I mean, if letting the virus runs riot, run riot leads to new variants, as people are suggesting it might, won't it undermine the vaccine programme that you're so proud of? No, the key to this is people getting vaccinated. That's vitally important. The numbers being vaccinated uh, in the very recent past has started to tail off. Uh, and I, I think we need to kind of reverse that trend. Um, we have a very high rate of coverage right now, but there are groups within society uh, and some younger people who are still not coming forward for vaccination. It's important that they do so. That's how we're going to get on top of this. Now, I agree some of the other things do help. Of course they do. They all add up and they help. But the key to this is vaccination. It's so vitally important people get vaccinated. Let's take a look at this new policy, Andrew Morrison. The rules for non-food businesses are extremely complicated. Are they going to work? Can they work? Yeah, I think so. Um, clearly, the government's being very cautious. It doesn't want to advance uh, the 16th of August uh, when people who have been jabbed and have tested negative uh, will not have to self-isolate. Um, but I, I think what it's trying to do is to be as cautious as it can be, reacting pragmatically to the situation that it finds, and that is to say making sure logistics um, uh, are, are able to continue. And goodness me, have we learned over the past few months how much we rely on key workers in logistics, lorry drivers in particular. It's been a revelation, I think, to many people just how much we rely upon them. So we have to keep things turning, but equally we need to keep people as safe as possible so that as many people as possible can get vaccinated. By the 16th of August, everybody will have had that opportunity pretty much. Rishnara, the government position, stated position, is to move from pandemic to endemic. Um, when it comes to COVID, you've got to do it sometime. Why not now? Well, look, the government uh, has set uh, a deadline, which it did for the 19th, and it set another one. But it, it doesn't. It's not very good at responding to the evidence, and they were being warned about the risks of infections growing, uh, and they decided to uh, take uh, the mandatory requirement for mask wearing and the other social the social distancing and other things that would help us. Um, to have that you need collective action in society for these sorts of things to work. And while 70% of the population believe we should have mask wearing, you know, the, the rest of the population um, uh, uh, needs a nudge and needs a push from uh, government and mandatory requirements can help. Um, so we need the safeguards and protections in place as we open up. Otherwise, we're going to go in, we're going to be in this, we're not going to be in an endemic, we're going to be in perpetual cycles of infections going up, damage to the economy, costs to people's jobs and livelihoods, and then further restrictions because the NHS is already under pressure. We are seeing hospitalization grow significantly. And if it continues because of the infection rates, even if the numbers of deaths are not as high as um, before the vaccination program began in earnest, then you're looking at the hospitals not being able to cope. And let's face it, the NHS has gone through, um, you know, through so much in the last year and to put that kind of pressure on them because the government 
fails is failing to get a grip on the infection rates is really uh, horrific. And Not Stephen to Michael, let me just bring you in for the end of that. In Ben Chu's report, Paul Hunter, professor of medicine, said, you know, contact tracing now has pretty, probably pretty minimal value. It's not worth it for the economy and that business is getting its position right. Um, would you accept that? Well, uh, the, the argument was about the NHS app, not about contact tracing, direct contact tracing. Um, I think we've never had a proper and functional uh, test, trace, isolate and support system. One of the big problems we've always had with self-isolation is people don't do it because it's very difficult to do. And nobody disagrees with the fact that if you are actually infected, you should self-isolate. Now, one of the things we've seen today is the government is capable of changing its mind. So I wish it was putting more effort, number one, into changing its mind about suppressing infections, and number two, changing its mind about giving people the support they need in order to self-isolate. The issue I isn't motivation. People are motivated to do the right thing. They just need the support in order to do it. And that's I'm afraid the we're going to have to wrap it up there. Thank you so much. Stephen Riker, Andrew Morrison and Rishnara Ali, thank you very much for coming on the programme. Thank you.